Good evening. I would like to welcome you to the diversity celebration for the class of 2020 of Michigan State University College of Human Medicine. Just a couple of weeks ago, we were able to host a virtual graduation for our students in the class of 2020. This evening is an opportunity for us to sit back and relax and have some conversations with several of our newest Spartan MDs who have been a part of the College of Human Medicine and all the efforts that we have done related to increasing diversity and inclusion. To our graduates, you represent that contribution to the diversity workforce that the College of Human Medicine prides itself in. As a part of our mission, we talk about preparing students to serve the underserved. We also underscore that we're preparing students to be excellent physicians in whatever field of medicine that you pursue. So whether in the future you'll do research, administration, service in a clinic, service in a private practice, service in a hospital, we hope that your collective experience here at the college has prepared you well. We are super excited about tonight and we just want to applaud you for everything that you've accomplished. It is my distinct privilege to introduce to you two of our most recent leaders here at the college. Ms. Brittany Lane and Ms. Ashley Seymour are the co-presidents of the Student National Medical Association for the upcoming 2020-21 year. They will join us now. First, we will hear from Ms. Lane, and she will be followed by Ms. Seymour. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Lipscomb. Uh, good, e good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Brittany Lane, and as of today, um, I am a second year medical student, as well as the current co-president of the Student National Medical Association. Um, I would like to welcome you all to the annual College of Human Medicine diversity celebration uh, for the class of 2020. I am so honored to be here tonight and amidst a virtual room full of doctors who only a few years ago were in my shoes. Um, you all are a testament that medical school is a mountain that can be conquered. Each of you have a unique story constructed by your experiences, both the triumphs and struggles. As you enter the next step in your journey, I urge you to never forget the reasons why you chose medicine. In closing, tonight cannot be celebrated without recognizing how amazing the faculty and staff were who supported you all through this um, journey. Um, so I would like to welcome you to this amazing celebration to celebrate you all. Um, now, that, now I would like to turn it over to my colleague in the Grand Rapids, SNMA co-president, Ashley Seymour, for the reading of our mission statement. Thank you, Brittany, and good evening, everyone, and thank you, Dr. Lipscomb, for the introduction. So my name is Ashley Seymour. I am a rising M2 and the current SNMA co-president for Grand Rapids. So the mission statement for SNMA is to create an atmosphere wherein professional excellence and moral principles can find fullest expression to promote the dissemination of information relative to minority issues in the field of medical education, to take necessary and proper steps to eradicate practices in the field of health profession education that compromise the goal of providing quality education to minorities and women, to promote the development of workable programs for the implementation for, of better urban and rural health care, to provide national leadership in the promulgation of legislative policies for the provision of enhanced access to better healthcare, 
to promote the sponsorship of programs for minority youth to encourage their entrance into health professions and to promote increases in the levels of minority student recruitment, admissions, and retention in schools training health. So now I would like to introduce Kimberly Adugemfi, the current co-vice president in Grand Rapids. Thank you, Ashley, for um, that really nice speech that you just gave. And I and um, I'm going to begin my speech about talking about what SNMA has done for the past year. So as you may have been aware that community service is the heart and soul of SNMA. And SNMA puts on many events for pre med for pre medical and medical students and also for the surrounding community. Um, and in particular, those that come from disadvantaged backgrounds. Just to highlight a few of the events, we started off the year with Crack the Curriculum, which is an event where we introduced the first years to all of the external resources that they can use to supplement their studies along with JIT. And then we have Med School 101, where we assisted pre-medical pre students with reviewing the medical school application process and providing them with an idea about the life of a medical student. And then we have um, continued community service through engaging with children in the local community um, in East Lansing and, and Grand Rapids. So Grand Rapids is one of um, our big community service um, projects that we've been doing is with Mazizi Maji, which um, we go to the Baxter Community House and help, we do activities with um, the middle schoolers after, when, in the evenings. And then um, to round out our year, um, we had one of our biggest events of the year, which was um, our annual Reach Out to Youth event, also known as RODI, which is a free program that invites children ages 6 to 11 from disadvantaged and underrepresented populations to participate in interactive small group sessions with anatomy, physiology, and clinical medicine. This program aims to increase their exposure to the sciences and possible careers in medicine. And then also we had um, the cultural banquet, which was a celebration of African-American culture. And then I will um, pass the mic on to Dr. Liscombe. Thank you so much. I think for many of us who are on the call, we know how important the Student National Medical Association has been over the years to, I put my video off, how important SNMA has been over the years to the college. Um, this would have been our 38th consecutive SNMA celebration of diversity to close out our year. And I share that with you because it's important for all of us to appreciate that the substantial contributions of SNMA have not just been made in the last year or two that SNMA has been active in the college over all these years. And I think it's also important to know that the deans of the college, starting with um, Dean Weston, who was dean when the very first activity was held, every dean since Dr. Weston has supported the SNMA, supported this event, engaged with the organization. And I think that's a very important historical pillar that we want to remember. Because I don't believe that happens at every medical school. I think it's sort of unique to us. I have the privilege now to introduce Dr. Aaron Sousa, who is our current interim dean. Dr. Sousa, first and foremost, is, an, is a medical educator. He loves teaching. He loves sharing the craft of medicine. We are very fortunate to have him in his leadership role. 
he has been the glue that has kept us all together um, through many transitions that we've had at the college. We can't claim him as a true Spartan MDs since he really trained at one of those Big Ten rival schools called Indiana University. If you were seeing him in his regalia, you'd see a lot of red because red is, you know, one of their colors. Um, but Dr. Sousa has been instrumental in ensuring that we really do have a wonderful educational program. You know, whenever you come to medical school, you come with an idea about what medical education is going to be about. And it's his leadership that has really allowed us to continue to evolve. So a couple of the alumni who are on with us this evening will remember in the olden days, there was something called track one and track two. And we evolved to a newer curriculum where we had a block one, block two, block three, a curriculum that we now refer to as legacy. And then we are currently excited about our shared discovery curriculum. To be able to make curricular changes, you have to have the support of the dean. And it's really special having um, Dr. Sousa's interim dean because he actually understands the curriculum and the academic mission, and it really is the foundation of the college. So it is my great honor to bring to the screen Dr. Aaron Sousa. Thank you, Dr. Lipscomb. Um, it is a, a great joy and, and privilege uh, to come to the screen to talk with all of you at the diversity celebration. And first, I, I want to acknowledge that Michigan State University occupies the ancestral, traditional, and contemporary lands of the Anish Inabeg, um, the Three Fires Confederacy of Ojibwa, Ottawa, and Potawatomi peoples. In particular, the university resides on land seated in the 1819 Treaty of Saginaw. And I recognize, support, and advocate for the sovereignty of Michigan's 12 federally recognized Indian nations, for their historic indigenous communities in Michigan, and for ind indigenous individuals and communities who live here now, for those who were forcibly re removed from their homeland. I acknowledge the real ways that the state of Michigan, Michigan State University, and residents of this land, including me, have benefited from the forced and systematic removal of the Ananishan Inabeg, sorry about that, and other indigenous peoples from Michigan, particularly during the Indian removal periods of the 19th century. And I thought I would start and plan to continue that sort of the land acknowledgement um, because I take a lot of pride in this being a land grant institution, and I realize that that's not necessarily, um, well, the, the notion of a land grant institution that, that um, land was given to um, help the people of the state benefit um, depends on the land actually being given. And the COVID-19 um, experiences of minorities and um, mostly Black Americans has made me think about what has been given and what has been taken. And um, because lives have been taken as a result of disparity and economic injustice and slavery, genocide. And I, I think that um, I haven't given enough thought to where those, um, what our history is and what it means and, and the mixed legacy of being a land grant institution. I think that its modern iteration is an attempt to do good and to provide for the public good. And you can see that in the work of our alumni. Uh, over the last month or so, I've had the pleasure of having some alumni on, um, on webinars that we've done. 
talking about the work that they've done in cities like Detroit and in parts of the Northeast. And that the good that we do to help communities who suffer, we can take great pride in. And I take great pride in being a part of that. I think that the diversity that we celebrate today is a part of that work to make good on a legacy and to attempt to make the world a better place. I often think that my job is to be useful. I want to be useful to the faculty, to the students. Most importantly, I want our students to be useful. I think that is how we all make a great difference in the world. And I am delighted that you have joined us and the great privilege and, and sometimes difficult path of being a physician. It is a wonderful and noble provision, uh, profession for whatever problems and struggles and ails that it has. It is at heart trying to be useful and trying to help people have a better, healthier life. I wanna thank you for joining me and for joining your faculty in that effort. And I look forward to working with you. It's great to have students on the wards again. It's great to take care of patients with students who care, with residents who are dedicated. It is a great privilege and it's a lot of fun. And I wanna thank you for joining me on that path. And I wanna congratulate all the graduates uh, who we got to celebrate not that long ago and um, offer my appreciation and encouragement for those of you who are still on that path toward graduation. And thank you very much. And now I get to introduce Dr. Diane Wagner. Dr. Wagner um, has done just about every job in the medical school. She is one of the foremost educators in the country. The AAMC and other institutions have gone to her for help. She provides them guidance and great work. Um, I think people, she has a bit of an aw shucks kind of attitude sometimes and people may not realize just how incredibly brilliant she is, how hard she works and a near magical ability to bring people together to get something done. She has been a wonderful clinic buddy and uh, hall mate. And um, it's my pleasure to introduce her here, Dr. Wagner. Ah, oh, shucks. That's all I can say to that. Thank you very much, Dr. Sousa, for that wonderful introduction. Um, I'm going to take a little bit different tact about um, solving problems and about uh, the value of diversity. Um, I want to first say thank you so much to everyone for inviting me to speak uh, at this wonderful event. Uh, there has been a lot of joy uh, in the last few weeks that really helps sort of mitigate all the problems that we're dealing with uh, in a very unusual time. There are certainly a lot of problems to be solved in this time, little problems, medium-sized problems, and big problems. Um, and if there's one thing I've learned uh, in my years as a part of medical education that is that diverse viewpoints are always a part of the solution. It is very easy to identify problems. Most people do this pretty readily. Um, identifying problems is necessary, but isn't usually joyful and doesn't get you on the road to solving them. Contributing to solutions is very hard work but often work that is sort of anti-burnout. We spend a lot of time talking about burnout, but contributing to solutions, uh, again, is a ameliorant of that, I think, and many times contributes to joy, even in the hardest of circumstances. So I'm gonna start with a brief story and then offer a few things to think about as you continue to be a part of the solution to the challenges that face us. Um, in the early two, thousands, I joined the Dean's office and was in charge of our residency programs. And I didn't know very much about residency programs. It was a new job and I needed to get smarter fast. Um, one of the opportunities that I was availed of was something, um, well, we called it Associate Dean's Charm School, but really it was a, a very wonderful week delivered by the Association for American Medical Colleges, filled with helpful learning and a lot of meeting and working with great colleagues all of whom had new positions and needed to get smarter too. 
As a part of the meeting, we did our Myers-Briggs type and then engaged in exercises designed to help us use that information for good rather than evil. And it was spectacularly enlightening for me. So I'm an ENTJ. Some days I'm an ESTJ, but the N and S, the intuition and sensing scale, is the only one that I'm just not off the charts at one end of the scale. I am such a high extrovert, sitting so far at the opposite end of the table from the high introverts that we can barely see each other, but they can hear me. And they are all hoping with all their might that I might stop talking so that they can think. Um, I'm on the high ends of other scales too, seeing 46 degree angles where others see space and time. And when you are seeing things so differently from others, it's sometimes easy to wonder how in the world these diverse viewpoints can coalesce around solutions. During those two days, our leader often asked those from opposite ends of the scales to talk to each other, very frankly. Um, high extroverts asked high introverts why they never participated in discussions, and the high introverts asked a high extrovert why they never stopped talking. They actually didn't phrase it that way, but I'm just going to let you imagine what they asked us to do. Um, and so it went. Our last exercise was to solve a problem. Um, the leader put groups of people with the same personality preferences together and then created one very diverse group that utilized as many different types as possible. My like-minded group worked very smoothly together, but we couldn't solve the problem. Other like-minded groups worked very smoothly together, but they couldn't solve the problem. The most diverse group grappled and discoursed, sometimes quite loudly. There wasn't as much nodding and smiling, um, but in the end they had a rational, logical, workable solution. It just won the day. And that has really been my experience. Uh, diversity of every type wins the day. Less smooth sometimes, less comfortable sometimes, richer and better always. Um, when diversity sits at the table and when people put their whole selves into the task at hand, um, solutions are not only possible, they are often of high quality um, and the path is often joyful. So go forth and put your wonderfully diverse whole selves into learning, thinking about problems, confronting data, and being a part of the solution. If you do, I firmly believe that there is just no limit to what you can accomplish. So that is my um, message to you to embrace all that you bring to this wonderful profession that you've joined. I'll, I'll add my welcome to Dr. Seuss and say we are so happy to have you as colleagues and look forward to everything that you will bring to the care of patients and to the discovery of new knowledge um, and to this wonderful profession we, we now share. It is now my great pleasure to introduce Ms. Kathleen Asif, the Director of Student Programs par excellence from our wonderful Flint community to make some remarks. Ms. Asif? Thank you, Dr. Wagner. As Dr. Wagner said, I'm the Director of Student Programs for the Flint Campus, and it gives me great pleasure to be with you this evening to celebrate our amazing students. As many of you know, I've been the Director of Student Programs in Flint since 1998, and prior to that, for 10 years, I was Assistant Director in the Office of Financial Aid and responsible for the three medical schools and the School of Nursing. That means I've worked with medical students for 32 years. I'm a first-generation college student from Lansing, Michigan, and both of my degrees came from Michigan State. I only wanted to go to MSU, and you can say that I bleed green. I left financial aid in order to have the opportunity to interact with a small group of medical students on a daily basis. I still can remember the first day that I walked up to the front door of Hurley Medical Center to interview for my Flint campus position. The bricks were covered by ivy, and I heard in my mind MSU shadows singing softly about ivy-covered walls. Halls. I walked into the door and heard physicians and residents speaking in many different languages, and I saw the diversity everywhere I looked. I knew I had come home. There are many events that the Office of Student Affairs coordinate, which are intended to honor and celebrate our students. This year, the pandemic created the opportunity to celebrate in a different way. 
We recently celebrated all of the awards and scholarships that our students received at our virtual scholarship banquet. Prior to that, we celebrated our graduating seniors at our virtual commencement. Although these events are special, there's nothing that is more special to me than the diversity celebration that is usually held in the Lincoln Room of the Kellogg Center the night before graduation. On that night, like tonight, we come together with friends and families to hear the reflections from each graduate. These reflections always provide us with laughter and tears, hope, and the promise that all of the challenges that our students have encountered have only made them more resilient and determined to use their experiences and voices to do good in the world. I have been blessed over the last 22 years in Flint to have the opportunity to get to know many of the graduates that we celebrate and have celebrated with on this evening. We have laughed together and cried together. We have shared numerous hugs in the hug zone. Although the, this pandemic has closed down the office hug zone, it has not closed down the virtual hugs that we continue to share in emails and Zoom meetings. Today, I had the opportunity to share virtual hugs with Luis Espinoza, who could not be here this evening. I ask that you send a prayer to him and his family. I'm so very proud of all of you. Your stories uplift us. Your courage inspires us. Your knowledge and power will protect us. I raise my glass to you and hope to, that you know just how special you all are. As I close, know that I'm sending virtual hugs to all of you and will continue to do so as you begin your residency programs. Good luck and go green and know that you are an important reason why Spartans will. Thank you, Kathy. Um, Kathy has been a great um, advocate for students and an incredible contributor to the performance of the college and and she, we have leaned on her um, as we have started new campuses and new programs and she has been a wonderful partner to so, to so many of us. And it is my pleasure now to introduce Dr. Marsha Rapley, uh, CHM alumnus, uh, former dean, um, and uh, Flintstone. She has um, done uh, so much for this college. For those of you who um, weren't around when she began as her, her deanship in about 2005. Um, the college is in many ways unrecognizable from then. Um, we have been transformed from a fairly small um, program to a fairly large one. Um, our research and student programming has been transformed. And as we were designing the shared discovery curriculum, it simply could not exist. Uh, without her support and her encouragement to um, to be more aggressive, to take more risks, to try to be the very best possible curriculum. And I take great pride in what the faculty and students and staff of the college have uh, created in Flint and Grand Rapids and the Shared Discovery Curriculum in Midland and Traverse City um, and Southfield and all of that work. Um, was really possible because of Dr. Rapley. And um, it is a, my great pleasure to introduce her um, as a mentor and friend and colleague. Um, Dr. Rapley, the screen is yours. Thank you, Erin. Um, it is wonderful to have this opportunity to talk to all of you. And Erin, those are very kind words and they mean a great deal to me. Um, but I want all of you listening, whether you are graduates or will be graduates in a few years, our staff, our faculty, all these things happen not because I made them happen or I created them, but I had an opportunity to support. I had a position that allowed me to influence in some way. And that starts now, that starts today for you. When you have the opportunity to help another person, uh, a program that you find exciting and that you see will, will take wings and will soar, put your effort behind that because what will be accomplished 
by the people that you might support and you may well inspire, you can't even imagine. It is so great. And I've had that experience. So I share that with you. It's never a small thing when you get behind someone who is working to do what's right or what's good. And I want to bring that around to two things that I think are often uh, kind of dumped on our students of color. And I want to think out loud uh, about that for a little bit. Uh, one is the uh, duty as a role model. And the other is a duty around uh, facing the huge inequities and disparities that we see. And healthcare is so sharply aggravated and brought right to our face by this pandemic. The reason why I say it's dumped on our students of color is it's often assumed that you should take this up, that it's your special responsibility over and above all the responsibilities that you have worked so hard to have and now are anointed you are our doctors joining us and you will carry forward and thrive with those responsibilities. And so I want to be careful that I don't presume and you don't allow others to presume that you carry the responsibilities of the world in rectifying problems that are so longstanding. But I will ask you for a moment to think about people who have helped you along the way? And how have they helped you? And is it possible at certain times in your life to help others? You know, I was CEO of a $4 billion revenue health system. I was Dean of the College of Human Medicine, which was an enormous privilege that I still can hardly get over. And there are very few women who've carried those roles. And so I know what it is when people look to you to be an extraordinary role model. You don't always have the capacity to give, but it, it will ebb and flow. And there will be times when you can be generous with that. And there are times when you need to be generous with yourself and give that support and energy inwardly or to those special people that are so important in your life, your family, your friends. But always know and never underestimate the power of a gesture, of a word of encouragement. And the things that have come back to me since I began my career in nursing uh, in the early 70s, by way of thanks, are almost always the things that I never even realized I did, that I really had no idea would set in motion a lot of wonderful and amazing things. When we think about health disparities and inequities, it's a similar burden. And there is no way that we can allow that burden to be carried only by people of color. There are many of us who have the ability to shape that and influence that. And it is our responsibility first and foremost. But I will tell you when I sat in this audience in the uh, Lincoln Room several years ago, I was incredibly moved by a graduate who talked about her mother died of breast cancer before she came to medical school. And she was in her second year of medical school when she came to understand that her mother had a curable breast cancer, but was never offered treatment because she was among those who we describe as a victim of disparity or inequity. I tell you that story because you may be in the midst of that your family, your friends may be in the, in the whirl of all of that. And this is where you may have an opportunity to influence. Not because it is uniquely your responsibility, but because your voice is unique. 
and you will know the insides and outs of that. And you will know things that we don't know, that others don't know and don't think about. So if you have that capacity in that moment, and you won't always have it, so please do not beat up on yourself for that. But when you do, your voice will be very powerful. And I'm very excited to see and hear all of the things that you do in the coming years. And I'm wishing you all the best. You don't need my wishes because you are extremely well prepared and you are extremely well supported. Remember, we're always here for you and that will never change over your entire career. So thank you again for this opportunity. Thank you so much, Dr. Rapley, for those very heartfelt words. I think you can see a trend that if you ever have been a part of the College of Human Medicine family, you never leave it. That is something that's so unique about us. And it's super, super special to have had Dr. Rapley share with us tonight because she was also a student. And then she came back to join the faculty and then she moved up to become Dean. We were very sad when she moved on to be vice president of a different institution, but she never said goodbye to us. And so just remember that you will always have the College of Human Medicine family around you. I am delighted to now introduce Ms. Ashley May. Ashley is the Assistant Director of Student Programs in the Flint community. And Ashley has been a part of helping us figure all these virtual activities out. I want to thank her and I also want to thank Ms. Asa because from the very moment that we began to think of how to do our programs virtually, they have been in it with us from the very beginning. So I want to publicly thank them for that. And with that, I will invite Ms. May to begin the introduction of the graduates. Thank you, Dr. Lipscomb. It is my privilege to recognize the accomplishments of the students being honored here this evening. Dr. Brittany Ajegba. Dr. Ajegba has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the leadership in medicine for the underserved program. Dr. Ajegba will be completing her residency training in family medicine at the University of Miami Jackson Health System in Miami, Florida. Dr. Michael Andrew. Dr. Andrew has earned a Master of Public Health and will be completing his advanced residency training in physical medicine and rehabilitation at Harvard Spalding Rehabilitation Hospital in Charlestown, Massachusetts. Dr. Anita Arthur. Dr. Arthur is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing her residency training in internal medicine at the Ohio State University Medical Center in Columbus, Ohio. Dr. Clementina Asamua. Dr. Asamua is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing her residency training in obstetrics and gynecology at Wayne State University Detroit Medical Center in Detroit, Michigan. Dr. Natalie Blake. Dr. Blake has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the Leadership in Medicine for the Underserved program. Dr. Blake will be completing her residency training in pediatrics at the University of North Carolina Hospitals in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Dr. Micah Brainerd. Dr. Brainerd has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the Medical Partners and 
public health program. Dr. Brainerd will be completing his residency training in general surgery at SUMA Health in Akron, Ohio. Dr. Temi Brotherson. Dr. Brotherson will be completing her residency training in family medicine at Sparrow Hospital in Lansing, Michigan. Dr. Mutinta Chisawa. Dr. Chisawa will be completing her residency training in emergency medicine at the University of Texas Medical School in Houston, Texas. Dr. Carlos Damas. Dr. Damas has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the leadership in medicine for the underserved program. Dr. Damas will be completing his residency training in pediatrics at the University of California in San Francisco, California. Dr. Luis Espinoza. Dr. Espinoza is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing his transitional year of residency training at Healthcare Alliance, University of Houston, Kingswood in Houston, Texas. Dr. Gloria Felix. Dr. Felix will be completing her residency training in emergency medicine at Montefiore Medical Center in the Bronx, New York. Dr. Crystal Holly. Dr. Holly will be completing her residency training in family medicine at Michigan State University College of Human Medicine in Alma, Michigan. Dr. Jeffrey Holton. Dr. Holton is a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing his residency training in diagnostic radiology at Beaumont Health in Dearborn, Michigan. Dr. Shalala Howard. Dr. How Howard will be completing her residency training in family medicine at Presence Saints of Mary and Elizabeth Medical Center in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Adriana Jackson. Dr. Jackson has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the Medical Partners in Public Health Program. Dr. Jackson will be completing her residency training in pediatrics at the University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Lisa Lavlinay. Dr. Lavlinay will be completing her residency training in pediatrics at New York Presbyterian Hospital, Columbia University Medical Center in New York City, New York. Dr. Willie McClure. Dr. McClure has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the Leadership in Medicine for the Underserved Program. Dr. McClure will be completing his residency training in internal medicine at the University Hospitals Cleveland Medical Center, Case Western Reserve University in Cleveland, Ohio. Dr. Mustafa Mohammed. Dr. Mohammed has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the Medical Partners in Public Health Program. Dr. Mohammed will be completing his residency training in neurology at the University of Florida College of Medicine in Kissimmee, Florida. Dr. Iojima Ninabu. Dr. Ninabu will be completing her residency training in internal medicine at Morehouse School of Medicine in Atlanta, Georgia. Dr. Amina Ramadan. Dr. Ramadan has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the Leadership in Medicine for the Underserved Program. Dr. Ramadan is also a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing her residency training in combined emergency medicine internal medicine at the University of Illinois College of Medicine in Chicago, Illinois. Dr. Sophia Tessima. Dr. Tessima will begin residency training in 2021. Dr. Kiona Thompson. Dr. Thompson has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the leadership in medicine for the underserved program. Dr. Thompson is also a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing her residency training in obstetrics and gynecology at Cedars Sinai Medical Center in Los Angeles, California. Dr. Shana Vega. Dr. Vega has earned a certificate of recognition for the completion of the leadership in medicine for the underserved program. Dr. Vega is also a member of the Gold Humanism Honor Society and will be completing her residency training in obstetrics and gynecology at Kaiser Permanente in Oakland, California. 
It is now my distinct pleasure to welcome those honorees who have elected to share a reflection with us live this, season, live this evening. First, allow me to introduce Dr. Brittany Ejekba. Hi, everyone. Um, I just wanted to share some thoughts. Um, I had to write something down so I don't ramble. <laughs> um, so please bear with me. Um, I posted some of these reflections a few weeks ago around graduation time. So if you've already heard this from me as my ABLE family has, uh, I apologize for the redundancy um, and I'll try to be brief, but these were um, just some words are more for me and for uh, those who may just be beginning their journeys. Um, med school has been a journey. Um, I am smiling here today, um, but there were self-doubts, insecurities, lack of confidence, all of those things that kind of creep into your head over these years. Um, someone told me once, I don't think you think you deserve to be here. Um, and I thought, wow, they are right. Like imposter syndrome is real. Um, as I reflect on this journey to becoming the first doctor in my family, I think these words so accurately describe so much of my time in medical school. Um, having questioned myself at every turn, um, whether that was taking Orgo 2 or the MCAT not going as well or, um, you know, dealing with tackling board exams, etc. cetera, um, you're going to have those doubts and at times you're going to fail. Um, medical school is hard um, and not because of the hours you have to study and the time away from your family and friends, um, the missed birthdays, the missed calls and text messages that go unanswered, but because sometimes the mental toll that these small sacrifices take over time um, can almost leave you with a feeling of, of defeat in some ways. And not because you don't have a support system or only 2% of the physician workforce looks like you, um, but it's just, it's hard. Um, sorry, one second. So after going uh, through this long journey, um, and what I just mentioned was the tip of the iceberg. Um, it's crazy to be kind of ending medical school in the midst of a global pandemic um, and a national crisis. Um, at the end of something this major in the lives of a lot of medical students, after you've worked so hard, you want to celebrate um, with your family and friends. You've gritted through the long nights um, and lonely mornings, through all the tears, um, many of which in Mrs. Green or Kathy's office. Um, the failures and the setbacks that really um, only a few people will understand, um, and you still made it to right here, right where you're supposed to be. So I know this might not be the way we want to go out, but this is also an opportunity for us and others to support one another in new ways. Um, and I'm so proud of everyone who matched and is graduating this year. Um, and know that while the lack of celebration, while disappointing, doesn't negate the accomplishment. Um, as I look back, my dad always said, run your own race. He's sitting right here. <laughs> um, and run it, I have. And while I haven't gotten here the conventional way, it's my way. Um, and I wouldn't change a thing because diamonds are made under pressure. To quote the incomparable and phenomenal woman, Maya Angelou, stand up straight and realize that you tower over your circumstance. You have been paid for by the sacrifices made by some of your ancestors, you would not be here. They have paid for you. So when you enter a challenging situation, bring them on stage with you, let their distant voices be with you. With that said, to my grandma Agnes, who passed away a couple weeks ago, and my grandma Ella, I hope I made you proud. Um, I'm thankful to God, my ancestors, and all my mentors, um, especially Dr. Lipscomb, um, whom without I truly would not be here. Um, she believed in us and she gave us a chance. Um, and oftentimes that's all someone needs. And also thank you to Dr. LB, Ms. Green, our Flint campus administrators. Kathy, you'll, you will be missed. Um, my bioethics team, my letter writers, my ABLE crew, I truly could not have done it without you. And there's no other group I would have wanted to go through this journey with. And for all we've been through, we made it. I'm so proud of you um, and to all my loved ones who got me to this point. Um, I know that with the new tools I have, I'm much more equipped to help, help patients deal with the challenges that so often have nothing to do with their health status, um, particularly our young minority communities in underserved areas such as Flint. With that said, I'm forever grateful for the opportunities, the sacrifices, patience and understanding and belief in my dreams. 
Um, and because of your support, um, I have a duty and a responsibility to ensure that the call to mentor others does not go unanswered. And admittedly, I could have done a better job with this during medical school, but that we too can change the narrative of what it means to be diverse in medicine. This can be through an ABLE alumni mentor-mentee pairing relationship for new students or figuring out ways in which to help those coming up behind us by um, being open about our experiences. So often we want to paint a pretty picture because we don't want to appear weak or less than, but I think there's strength and vulner vulnerability and perhaps opening up about what I thought, what I went through as someone did for me, particularly for those who are the first doctors in their family, it will give other people permission to do the same. Um, we sit in a place of privilege and we have to use that privilege to speak out and not only help others coming behind us, but we also have a responsibility to do so in a societal context as well, particularly with all that's going on in the news right now, um, especially in communities of color, more specifically black communities, whether that is health disparities or systemic injustices. So with a renewed sense of purpose and endless ideas and possibilities, I can't wait to see where the next phase of this journey takes us. Thank you to everyone who went on this journey with me and congratulations to everybody. Sorry, I was long-winded, but. <laughs> Thank you so much, Dr. Ajegba, congratulations. I now warmly welcome Dr. Michael Andrew. Dr. Andrew, you're muted. Can you hear me now? Awesome, thank you. Thank you for that. Thank you, Ashley. Uh, first and foremost, I wanna give all praise to God. Uh, I've said a lot of prayers to get to this point and more will be said in the future. Uh, for somebody like me, uh, very few know my story. Uh, went from playing soccer in the streets of Harare in Zimbabwe barefoot uh, to going through foster care here in America to having doubts all the way and every step and having few people who stepped in onto this path who really believed in the potential within. Uh, it was difficult and at times it was moments of crying. Um, I'll be the first one to admit that. But throughout the way, those people who came in and believed in the feel glimpse of hope that they saw within me, uh, I cannot thank them more than enough. And for a black man growing up in America, very few is expected, uh, was expected, and is expected for a lot of people who look like me. And for those few individuals to say, you don't necessarily have to follow this path. For example, the, the path from high school to jail, uh, or the path from high school to uh, physical activity such as sports or being an athlete or entertainment, uh, they showed me that there is another path for you, uh, for an individual like you, which requires you to use your intellect and demanded the best out of me. So for them, I cannot thank them enough. Uh, as I entered medical school, there were very few individuals who looked like myself and the few that I found, uh, the sense of brotherhood, familyhood, we continue to discuss up to this day, and they're some of my best friends. Uh, the list goes on. And what I really want to emphasize in this point is that uh, with uh, CHM, uh, the, the personnel that came into this, uh, into my life at this point, ranging from Dr. Osuch and an endless bowl of candy I used to eat in an office, uh, to running into Dr. Lipscomb at the cafeteria on campus while I'm studying, uh, to Dr. Duamena, always challenging and pushing, you know, asking what's the next clinical uh, uh, diagnosis you should be uh, considering, to Dr. Fan Bati at the Carefree Clinic, where I got to see so much um, disparities in my community. Uh, they really forced me to think outside the box and remember why I chose this path in the first place. So for my fellow graduates and everybody else who is yet to graduate, um, remember your why, because there will be moments where you'll be challenged, you'll feel drained, you'll think and tell yourself that this is not the path for me. This is more than I can handle. But if you remember your why and turn to those people that have always uh, saw the glimpse of fire or the spark in you, 
use that why to motivate you and to jump over the hurdles. I remember talking to Dr. Osage, and she always said, if you encounter an obstacle, think of it as a hurdle. I ran track and, uh, track and field. So uh, we use a lot of um, athletic analogs. And she always used to say, think of it as a hurdle. You, you're either going to go through it or you're going to jump through it. Regardless, you're going to go through it. So that's the message I want to tell everybody. Uh, we live in uncertain times. And even though it can be difficult to distance yourself from the issues that we're currently facing uh, in our communities, whether it's uh, social injustice, whether it's uh, police reform, or et cetera, the list goes on. I want to tell everybody that we have a privilege that has been afforded to us, and we need to be aware of that and listen to everybody who comes in, regardless of whom they look like or what they, or what they have in their bank accounts, listen to everybody because everybody has a story and that story can make a difference in that somebody's life at the end of the day. And just remember your why. So that's it. Thank you, Dr. Andrew. Congratulations. Thank you. Please welcome Dr. Anita Arthur. Hi, everyone. I just, first of all, want to say that we made it. We did it. I don't have any prepared remarks. I just had a couple of things you used to say. Um, I am the first physician in my family, like many of those who have spoken so far. But I really could not have done this without the support of many physicians and mentors at CHM. And I just wanted to say thank you. So um, Dr. Brady, Dr. Lipscomb, Dr. Sousa, Dr. Roscoe, Dr. Sakoni, Dr. Lomu, Dr. Dramina, Dr. Gera, Dr. Saka, Dr. McLeod, and so many other physicians and mentors who have poured into me and poured into my, my cohort and supported us through this journey. We just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you. I'd also like to thank my husband, my so support, super supportive husband and three children. I actually have them on camera right now. I have a new baby. And um, this is my, my oldest child, Sally, who is seven. And then my daughter, Efe, who just ran out of the room. And then we have so many friends and family members who helped us go through this journey and have made it. I just want to say thank you to them as well. Um, friends like, um, yes, of course, and Levi too, yes. And then Clementina and Amina, who um, really like just babysat for me when I needed the help. Yeah, I, like, I like them. As <laughs> exactly, stores. exactly. They babysat for me when I just needed a little bit of respite. Really, we did it together, y'all. We did it together. And um, thank God for helping us make it through. And we're going to go ahead and do great things. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Arthur. That was wonderful. Congratulations. Thank Please you. Welcome, Dr. Clementina Asamua. Real quickly before I start, I have to say um, hi to Sally, Effa, and the new baby, Anita Arthur. You guys are just Hello. like family to me. Hi, hi. Hi. I miss you guys. <laughs> we miss you but, too. <laughs> so hi, everyone. Congratulations, graduates. I know we've all had unique journeys to get to this destination, and I just want to say I'm proud of you all. As many of you know and have already experienced, medical school is one of the most difficult challenges that we will ever face in our careers. However, the SNMA family has made this all the worthwhile. Through SNMA, I was able to express my passion and desire to work with the marginalized community, address the health disparities that our communities face, and continue to work to diversify the healthcare force by working with the youth. I plan to continue this work throughout the rest of my career, specifically as an OBGYN, being an advocate for women from marginalized communities and working to address the maternal morbidity and mortality that significantly impacts our sisters. Uh, and again, I want to start by thanking my Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for being my light and giving me strength. I want to thank my parents, my sister and brothers, my extended family and my friends for believing in me and being my biggest cheerleaders. I want to thank Dr. Candice Smith King for being my mentor in more ways than one. I also want to thank Dr. Lipscomb and Dr. Maurer for opening the door to CHM for me and for their support and guidance. Dr. Brady and Dr. Phillips for their continued support and sound advice. Also to Dr. McCarran, the Office of Student Affairs, specifically Mrs. Fowler, Mrs. Blanks, Ms. Sadat, Joe Scott, Melissa Kekos, thank you for supporting all the amazing work that SNMA does and continue, continues to do and helping us pull off an amazing regional conference and reach out to youth along with many other events. And also thank you to my colleagues and friends. It has been a privilege to work alongside you, to the medical students, 
keep doing the work and don't give up because we need your compassion, work, work ethic, and intelligent and innovative minds to join us in, the work, in this workforce. To the graduates, I will continue to pray for all of you as we embark on this new journey. Congratulations, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Asamua. Congratulations. I now introduce Dr. Natalie Blake. Good evening, everyone. To all of my fellow newly graduated colleagues, I'm so excited for us. I'm so glad that we can say that we are part of the illustrious community of being minority physicians. That is no light accomplishment. And I want us to always remember that we belong here, we earned our stay here, and as we go forth, we'll have a unique experience and impact on the patients that we serve. Um, I also want to take a trip down memory lane, because Dr. Lipscomb said to, send, to share some memories. <laughs> so coming in um, to ABLE, I would like to remember the trains, <laughs> of course, being stopped prior to exams, trying to make our exams and having to wait for the trains in East Lansing. I want to remember Miss Green, who was especially missed by our cohort. Um, in the words of Miss Green, she would always tell us, last year we had a student. <laughs> and then she would go on a rant about a student. Um, I want to remember the ice cream from the dairy store. I want to remember the cadaver lab. I want to remember fee hall. Um, just all the countless memories that we had studying, crying, laughing, sharing. I know that I would not have made it through medical school without the lifelong friends that I made in my ABLE cohort. I would like to thank Dr. Lipscomb, of course, Ms. Green, um, DHM, my Flint community, my family, and most importantly, God. And I just, I just wish everyone the best. It's so good to see everyone. Thank you, Dr. Blake. Congratulations. Please welcome Dr. Temi Brotherson. Hi, everyone. Oh, what a journey. I praise God Almighty for making me worthy of a testimony of all times. Um, in anticipation of this moment, I've reflected on what it means to appreciate. And my feelings is that it includes saying the word, the phrase, thank you. It also includes the recognition of many that labored behind the scenes to create the environment that has allowed me to meet my destiny at my own pace. Dr. Lipscomb, thank you for your outstanding leadership, vision, and legacy. And thank you for creating this space for minorities. I want to thank my mentor, Dr. Sikoni, for believing the vision, even when I could not see it. You not only set an example in medicine, you also set one as a believer. I still recall the day I found myself deep in it, and I called you, and you prayed. Oh yes, that night, I dreamt like never before. Even as you move to a different community, I know God will continue to use you to reach many more lives. Thank you to my loving husband, my best friend for 17 years, my husband for 13. Medical school was supposed to be that brief stop. Instead, it became a discovery journey. I think my beautiful children, Ariel, God made me a beautiful woman. And Elijah, oh, the Lord swept up the old and remade me. I'm forever complete. My spiritual parents, your steadfastness, faithfulness, I will cherish all my life. You never stop praying and believing. I've been blessed to witness you walk the walk. I honor you both for your love and consistent support. And my sister and brother, you know we're siblings for life. <laughs> Even if we're not from the same parents. Don't you? You know this journey. My church family, my prayer warriors, Mrs. Bonner, Bonner Sister Bob, Sister Grace, Sharon Lawrence. Oh, I felt your prayers. Day in, day at night. Day in, day out, you are praying for me even when I couldn't communicate. To my tutors, thank you for believing in me. I would be remiss if I didn't mention Mrs. Renera Green tonight, just like everybody else. Gone too soon. Despite my making her promise, she will be around to see me graduate. As she always said, you're right, Tammy. 
<laughs> something I hear myself saying to others now, it is well. She was right. To my friends, my colleagues, and family, when I thought I had given my best, my very best, to no avail, I had a revelation. I recognized all of a sudden I had lost focus. I was visionless. I was striving for an end for which I had no vision. All of a sudden, the vision of my youth could no longer contain the end I was striving for. I lost sight. I was visionless. It was then I realized medicine is not my God. From that day, I had a new sense of peace, a renewed vision. Wherever you are, whatever state you find yourself, remember the mantle does not make the vessel. You, the vessel, have been carefully and preciously made. Your mantle, <laughs> medicine, right? May have left a mark on you. <laughs> may have left you some memories, but it does not define who you are, nor your purpose as God designed for you. The vessel's purpose remains as God designed it to be. The mantle is only a platform. Peace, everyone. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Brotherson. Congratulations. I'm honored to welcome Dr. Gloria Felix. Hello, everyone. So this is my niece, Emma, and I want to take this moment to really highlight the importance of the ABLE program. I was able to realize my dream of being a physician because of the ABLE program. And I want to talk about how their support emotionally, academically, just made this dream come true. I want to share a moment about I was struggling with a course and I was completely distraught and I didn't know what to do. And I went to Mrs. Green's office and I said, Ms. Green, I don't know what to do. I, I need help with this course. And within 20 minutes, she was able to connect me with an ABLE alum. And they said, let's talk. When are you free? I'm here to tutor you and we can do this and we're gonna do this. And I think that just really, um, it represents the community that ABLE is. They're here to support you. They're here to tell you that you can do this. And Dr. Lipscomb, thank you for having a vision and for seeing students like myself and giving us support and giving a dream that at times seemed very, very hazy, giving us a chance to make it through. Yeah. Dr. Brady, thank you for being there to always listen. Yeah. Dr. Lovell, thank you for teaching our neuroscience class with such enthusiasm and letting me fall in love with neuroscience. Thank you for all of you that support this program because it's so important. And to my ABLE cohort, I am so fortunate to have been part of a class that is so vibrant, intelligent, passionate and we are going out there and showing the world that we can shine and giving our communities the spirit that we can do it we will do it Spartans go green go white and that we will stand for you and we have a voice for you thank you all of you tonight that are here and class of 2020 I know this isn't the graduation that we dreamed of but we're here and we did it. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Felix. Congratulations. Please welcome Dr. Shalela Howard. Hi, everybody. Um, I can remember being in the Kellogg Center and reading the names of the graduates at this program three years ago and listening to their memories and their inspiring worlds. At that time, I remember hearing their words and knowing that there was a light at the end of this arduous journey. Now it's my turn to reflect on the journey and I'm not sure I have anything remotely as inspiring to say as they did or as my fellow graduates did earlier today. This journey has not been an easy one. There were many trials and tribulations, many times where I felt like giving up. Um, but through the support of everyone at CHM, through the support of the, my mentors, my small group leader, Dr. Wagner, 
and my colleagues, even when I never reached out, I just know they were there and that they were supporting and that they believed in me was enough to get me through this. Now I'm here, now I've graduated, and I can't help but think about the importance of just seeing somebody that looks like yourself that has completed this journey, that's made it. I can remember having a conversation on the residency trail with one of the residents, and we were just talking about how important diversity is, how important it is, not only for the physicians to have the ability to get diverse viewpoints and understand from other cultures and other um, ways of thinking, but for the patients as well, to see someone that looks like themselves, to know that, you know, someone made it, gives them so much validation that it's unbelievable. So, what I want to say is thank you to everyone that has supported me on this journey and made my medical school career just that much greater. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Howard. Congratulations to you. I'm honored to welcome Dr. Adriana Jackson. Hi, everyone, and congrats again to my great friends and new doctors in the class of 2020. I'm glad we can all get together one last time to celebrate all of our great accomplishments. Um, you all are my friends for life. I know I wouldn't have gotten through the struggles of med school without you. I'm thankful all of the memories we will cherish forever together. One that really sticks out to me is putting together the SNMA RMEC Region 5 Conference during second year in Grand Rapids. I required a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on top of med school's blood, sweat, and tears. Um, I learned some easy, fun lessons that I won't plan my own wedding or any other large events, um, but it really taught me a lot of lessons that I know I will take with me um, with life. Um, I'm thankful for all the lessons that I've learned and opportunities that I've gained because of this group. Um, I will share those memories and those lessons with my new friends, um, my new co-residents at residency, especially during these terrible times um, in the world. I hope as doctors, as underrepresented minority doctors, that we play a positive role in educating and perhaps even changing the minds of our non-minority patients, our counterparts and friends. Um, I just wanna end on thanking Dr. Lipscomb, Mrs. Fowler, uh, Dr. Edwards Johnson, Dr. Brady, Kathy, Ash Ashley, uh, Mrs. Blinks, and everyone else in the office and on this program who put uh, this tremendous celebration on. Thank you, thank you for all your support these four years um, and beyond. Um, I love and miss you all. Congrats again, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Jackson, congratulations. I now warmly welcome Dr. Lisa Lavlinet. Hello, everyone. I wanna thank you all for being here and uh, for putting this on <laughs> in these difficult times. I have had the great privilege to live a life where prior to college, I was very much unaware of the the depth <laughs> of systemic injustices that minorities face in this country. And prior to medical school, I did not feel a, a need to lean on specifically minority groups. And then moving to Grand Rapids in 2016 <laughs> provided a uh, a great impetus to seek out a group of minorities to find safe haven to feel seen and heard and I could not be more grateful to this group for providing that to me and for being there for me when I was in Grand Rapids and even as I moved to Flint I am forever grateful Thank you, Dr. Lavlinet. Congratulations to you. I now introduce Dr. Will McClure. Hi, everyone. Uh, certainly, I want to take the opportunity to express uh, gratefulness to God uh, for his loving kindness and grace toward me, uh, for allowing me this opportunity on, and platform on which I stand. Certainly, I would not be here without the kindness of God, uh, without the love and care uh, that my wife has given me, uh, Alexis. Uh, without the support and love and kindness and, and of my family. I'm truly grateful and blessed. Uh, I can recall many years ago watching The Cosby Show, uh, seeing Dr. Huxtable going back and forth um, 
to deliver babies and, and identifying with that and saying, I'm going to be there one day. I realized as life went along uh, that intelligence wasn't enough. It wasn't enough just to be able to have the intellect. But there were three important ingredients that I realized throughout my experience. Faith, family, and fight. Faith, family, and fight. I can't, I can't imagine that I would be here without my faith, without my belief in the Lord, um, and without my family. My family, I, I use that word very liberally. Um, I believe that family uh, are, are, is those, are those who make up your unity, make up your community. I call my family my will bill. Uh, those who really help to support and love on me. Um, at CHM, I really was able to identify my family. Dr. Lipscomb, one who loves and champions her students, one who challenges the status quo and really helps to seek and to serve others. Dr. Brady, Dr. Maurer, Dr. McCarran, uh, I really appreciate even the Office of Student Affairs staff. Uh, Mrs. Fowler, Mrs. Dillingham, and so many others who support the students. I can't imagine where we would be without the family there in Lansing. And then even in Flint, I had the wonderful opportunity to have Dr. Molidor. And can we mention Kathy Asif? What an amazing family member. And uh, Ashley as well. What an amazing family we had in Flint who helped make this journey even the better. And also fight. Fight is also so important. Because again, it's not just important to have the intellect and the ability to think critically, but you have to have the will, the power, and the drive to do better. I think it's important that we as individuals of color and students of color truly understand the idea of fight. It's not only enough just to be a wonderful physician, to be uh, critically critical thinkers, but we also have to be uh, thinking about the things that face and, and uh, the issues that our community and the audience or our patient population. When we look on the news, especially in today's time, not only do we have to experience uh, this major health crisis that we're dealing with, with COVID-19, but we have to understand that there is a major racial injustice um, that we are dealing with in the United States today. And it's not important just to be able to acknowledge it, but we even as practitioners, as practitioners of color, have to realize that we have a power yet to be able to help solve some of the issues that we deal with. Even how we identify our patient population, how we begin to think how we can uh, help solve some of the issues that we face even on a daily basis. One of my greatest memories of at Michigan State as Adriana and some others alluded to was planning the phenomenal regional conference, the uh, Student National Medical Association Region 5 conference. We worked, we toiled, we did an amazing job, I must say, but it was a lot of hard work. It would not have been able if we did not have the enormous support of our wonderful dean at that time, uh, Dean Norman Bochamp, who's now our vice, one of our vice presidents, Dr. Wanda Lipscomb, Dean Sousa, and so many others who band together and help us to create this wonderful project. I can think of uh, many times on the phone having a conversation and planning I was the only guy on the conversation on the phone with about seven fiery, fiery, fierce females who had wonderful and joyful opinions. And I would just at times just sit back and say, yes, I, I learned that that was the impetus as, as um, for my marriage, just learning how to say yes, ma'am. Uh, so certainly I thank uh, each of you and thank uh, this wonderful university uh, for providing a wonderful opportunity for me, able, for me to be able to go out, practice something I've dreamt of. Uh, which is medicine. As we always say, go green. Go white. Thank you for those words, Dr. McClure. Congratulations. I'm honored to welcome Dr. Amina Ramadan. Good afternoon, evening, everyone. First of all, I always hate giving speeches after Will because that's kind of his thing and he's so good at it. So thank you, Will, for your awesome words. Um, and I also have to say hi to F.A. and Sele, who brought me so much joy in medical school. And thank Anita for letting me watch them, even though I learned that a good babysitter doesn't let kids read stories two hours past bedtime even the reading is important. So sorry, Anita. Um, I will now get into my actual remarks. I have looked forward to this graduation ceremony in particular for a long time, um, and I'm very saddened that it has to be virtual, but I'm still so happy that we're honoring the occasion today, and I'm very honored to be a part of it. Um, I can't say everything that I wanted to say to you all in person, but what I definitely want to do first is to give thanks first to God above all else 
guidance. I wouldn't be anywhere near where I am today without faith and guidance next to my family, especially my mother, who is the one who actually deserves all of the credit for everything I have achieved, and my sister, who always tries her very best to support me. Lastly, I was given the opportunity of a lifetime to study medicine and achieve my MD at CHM, and my only hope is that I made everyone who invested in me and mentored me proud. Most of all, Dr. Wanda Lipscomb and every single faculty member and staff member involved with the ABLE program, without which I would absolutely not be a physician today. Um, not many of you know this, but the year that I chose to move to Michigan, I was waitlisted by my home medical school at number 30, and I waited three long months, what I often call the longest summer of my life, while they took 29 alternates off the waitlist and then stalled at that position for months while I was told I could not reapply because my position on the waitlist was too high. I received an email while I was in anatomy lab during ABLE fall that they would not be able to make space for one more applicant. It was then that I resolved to really become the applicant and the physician that my homeschool thought I would never be, but the MSU already knew that I was. I was also given the unexpected gift of what I still believe are the best medical school classmates in the country in the CHM class of 2020 on the East Lansing and Flint campuses. And I'm so pleased to be able to say that a great number of my most trusted friends are also at this ceremony with me. If any of you ever doubt yourselves, as I used to do constantly before the ABLE program gave me the confidence to believe in myself, please know that I would trust any of you here today with my own life, not because I believe we are all geniuses, though I have every confidence in your intellect, but because I have seen all of you under pressure and I know that you will always do the right thing by your patients, especially the patients who look like us and share parts of our life experiences, meaning they have been alternately ignored and misunderstood by not just the medical system, but society at large. You are all guided by the incredible kindness and sense of mercy I have personally seen in each of you that can always be found among students who face adversity and I know that you will use this to first do no harm. So thank you, thank you, thank you to everyone here today. I hope I will continue to make all of you proud. Please keep in touch and visit me in Chicago. Thank you. Thank you Dr. Ramadan. Congratulations to you. Please welcome Dr. Sophia Tessima. Hi everyone, it is an honor to be here and I'm just truly touched by what everyone has said so far. It's inspiring, learning more stories from my classmates that I've gotten very lucky to know over these four years and also to be in a place to celebrate and reflect with my family, with all of you um, and the community that we've created. Uh, you know, first I want to highlight, you know, some things I think about diversity and inclusion at CHM. You know, I was really pleasantly surprised when I started school at CHM. I wanted to seek out a medical school that was like-minded in valuing diversity and inclusion, dealing with public health issues. And that was something from the very start. We had public health courses. We had public health certificates, although I have a master's in public health. It was something that made me very eager to continue my education here. And when I started, it was something that, again, touched me to know that there was so much diversity in, in all the facets of diversity, in my opinion. Uh, I was very grateful for the minority representation in my class. It really helped to foster a sense of community and support, uh, a support system over these past four years and really helped, I think, in navigating a lot of the threats to diversity and inclusion that we faced as a nation over the past four years and beyond that. Uh, some things that were very painful and uh, to really try to figure out and navigate what our roles are as individuals and as professionals, uh, burgeoning physicians. And that still is so surreal to me because this process was not at all easy, not at all a smooth walk. And I can say that for many reasons, you know, as well as being, you know, a minority, um, being Ethiopian American, first generation physician, you know, I wanted to help break the mold of what a doctor looked like. I loved medicine. I loved public health. I loved underserved communities. It made sense. Um, um, and, you know, I, I tried to meet the difficult challenges that we were presented in medical school, but I really became uh, able to appreciate the, who I was becoming through these trials that I faced. And with all of you who've been there for me in many different facets, um, whether it was hanging out at radiology, studying in the basement, uh, going to SNMA events, it was always 
a journey and always something that I cherished throughout these years. And I, I definitely want to highlight the importance of working within CHM, our uh, SNMA the past four years. Uh, I was at MAPS liaison and it was a, a great opportunity to continue to give back, a very important part of what who I am and I think uh, what one of the tenants of SNMA is. Um, I was appreciative to have that platform to form lifelong friendships that I think I've had through these past four years, community service, outreach, and to have professional relationships to be able to go to the annual SNMA conference, work with the regional conference. It was something that was enriching and was absolutely necessary along with the, um, the biologic sciences that we were learning these past few years. Um, and I hope you know, to continue to take this, this, this training in all the ways that it is to be able to benefit communities of, you know, of diversity and to continue to promote diversity and experience culture, ethnicity, religion, and so on. You know, these are the ways that we can help as all of us, I feel many of us have mentioned to address problems within neglected communities, to make healthcare decisions that are sustainable, solutions that promote creativity, and really include a lot of people. Um, so yeah, in the future, that's what I hope to do, and particularly within Ethiopia. And I'm just so grateful for the faculty and staff who've supported me, working with Kathy and Ashley, uh, Dr. DeMuth, I would have to thank, Dr. Lipscomb, my tutors, uh, Dr. McCarran has been a huge help through these past four years. Uh, my family, especially my parents and my sister. My parents are here. That's my dad. <laughs> and my mom. My sister is watching. Um, and God, of course. Uh, and, you know, for all of those who've believed in my personal journey and for supporting my journey through medical school, believing in my dreams. Um, and I'm, I'm just so grateful to, to know all of you and have the position to share my unique perspectives and to learn and continue to listen to others unique perspectives. So thank you all. Thank you, Dr. Tesma. Congratulations. Lastly, please welcome Dr. Kiona Thompson. Hi, everyone. Um, I just want to say uh, thank you, SNMA and CHM for this opportunity to reflect on my journey as a minority in medicine. Uh, it's been inspiring hearing my colleagues speak about their own personal experiences through medical school and in life. Um, and it just makes me feel so proud to be a part of this group. Um, but I want to say I haven't always been proud to be a minority in medicine. And I just want to take you back to kind of where I grew up. I'm from Wisconsin. Um, I'm from a community where being diverse is not really celebrated and that's what I grew up in. Um, so going to college in Wisconsin, I was the only uh, black pre-med student. And so it was really amazing for me to be able to attend CHM uh, because the program is so diverse here and I wasn't the only one anymore. And I had friends that, I now had friends that had similar life experiences as me and felt the same way as me on a lot of issues that minority communities face. Um, and special shout out to Will, Clem, Adriana, Amina, and Sophie. I truly would not have gotten through this journey uh, without being a part of our little cohort that we have. So thank you all for your support um, and just being there and uh, sharing our similar experiences as we went through uh, medical school. Just being a part of that group was tremendous for my growth as a person and as a physician. And I also want to say being in the environment, the CHM environment has, uh, especially being a part of SNMA, uh, LMU, the shared discovery curriculum and training in Flint, um, I was giving the space to really grow and find my voice um, and tools through LMU program. I, I developed a voice where I can now, I feel more confident and more comfortable to advocate for social justice issues that affect health, social determinants of health, um, and really advocate for vulnerable populations because that's where my passion lies. And so um, I just want to thank CHM for this opportunity uh, to reflect and be a part of this group. And a special thank you to the faculty members who have been influential in my journey. Um, Dr. Lipscomb, Dr. Sousa, Dr. Phillips, Dr. Edwards Johnson. Um, you all have always been so encouraging. You've always had inspiring words and you are all great role models. So thank you for that.
Um, I also want to thank Mrs. Blanks and Mrs. Fowler for always supporting me. You guys have been such great supporters since day one. I love you and I hope we stay in touch. Ashley and Kathy, thank you so much for all that you've done for me and for making me feel at home in Flint. Kathy, you will be missed. Um, and I also want to thank Dr. Wagner. I want to thank you for being committed to our class and for believing in us. And I want to thank you for being a source of encouragement for me, a personal source of encouragement for me and peace as I went through one of the lowest emotional periods of my life studying for step one. Um, I'll never forget all that you guys have done for me and I'm proud to be a Spartan MD. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thompson. Congratulations. Thank you all so very much for sharing these impactful reflections. That concludes our live remarks for this evening. I now welcome Dr. Lipscomb back to the virtual floor. Thank you so much, Ashley. And thank you to the Spartan MDs that were willing to share their reflections and stories. This event could always be so much bigger. Um, you will notice that we had several um, individuals who we did PowerPoint slides of who wanted to be a part of this and wanted to be included in that way, um, but did not necessarily want to, you know, appear on the screen and share remarks. So I also want to sort of share that this is about half of the students that we could have had. And so for those of you who have come to the SNMA event before, you know that we rarely have 100% participation. I think in part that is because each of us experience diversity and inclusion from our own perspective. There is no scholar letter. There is no special way. And I was touched by the remarks from many of you as you sort of reflected on the place that you came from. The thing that's great about our college is we say come as you are, and we hope as a faculty we meet you where you are and that we help you um, navigate this sort of pathway that you've had to go through. So many, many thanks to each of you who chose to be a part of this. And thank you very much for sharing such inspiring remarks that I think will be meaningful for many of your colleagues who will follow. I would now like to introduce Ansha Williamson who is the co-vice president of SNMA for an inspirational reading. Ansha. Thank you, Dr. Lipscomb. I'm going to be reading a piece based upon the paradoxical commandments written by Dr. Kent Keith. People are often unreasonable, irrational, and self-centered. Forgive them anyway. If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish or ulterior motives. Be kind anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good anyway. Give the best you have and it will never be enough. Give your best anyway. In the final analysis, it is between you and God. It was never between you and them anyway. Thank you. Thank you, Ansha. It is now my um, delight to introduce one of our very illustrious alumni of the College of Human Medicine. So I can reflect back on when Dr. Kenya Sacconi was a medical student. She came to Michigan from California 
No one ever thought that she would really make Michigan her home. It was always that expectation that she would get her degree and she would go back to her beloved state of California. But God had some different plans for her. And our community, the greater Lansing community, has been so enriched having Dr. Kenya Sacconi as a practicing physician. She is loved and well-respected across the entire region for her wonderful work as a family medicine physician, but also as a person of faith, a person of vision, a person who was always willing to share with the community. When Will was talking, Dr. McClure, he talked about you know, the fact that you have so much to give back. And I think Dr. Sacconi has been a phenomenal role model to many of our graduates and many of our past graduates. And it's ironic that um, when we looked at her year of graduation, it was the year 2000. You know, that was the year when everyone thought that the world was gonna stand still as people anticipated what was going to happen on that first day of January in 2000. Would all the clocks stop? Would all your credit go away? Would every computer stop working? And that seems like a lifetime ago. And yet it seems like just a minute ago. So we're just delighted that Dr. Sacconi is here to share some alumni reflections. We are also bidding her farewell from Michigan. She is finally able to return to her home state of California. But just as Dr. Rapley is in Virginia and Dr. Sacconi will be in California, they are still committed to be a part of our wonderful CHM family. So now let's hear some reflections from Dr. Sacconi. Thank you so much, Wanda. Um, you guys see, I put my little graduation cap on and you guys would have had yours on too. Um, you guys, it is just an honor to be a part of this ceremony and to be able to document some of the history of African-American physicians in this community. I don't know if you guys remember Dr. Ralph Watson, of internal medicine, but he, he was the one who founded the Student National Medical Association for Michigan State University. And he, along with other visionaries, specifically Dr. Bill Bryant, who was a phenomenal gynecologist and educator here in this community and deceased way too early, as well as Glenda Moore, who served as the university physician for many, many years. Those were the people who sat down and decided we need to have a black physician organization in town. And they started that organization in 1993 and named it Mid-Michigan Medical Society. From there, there was a joint effort between the Student National Medical Association and Mid-Michigan Medical Society to ensure generations of African Americans and other underrepresented students in medicine, the support that they would need. But as you can see from all the other speakers today, there have been many who have supported you. It gives me great joy to see that <laughs> to see that you guys have carried on maps, have carried on SNA in such a way that now we've got Brittany Lane who's here. She participated in maps. We've got Riza Yewa, who is the daughter of one of our members. We've got Elaine Laws Barker who has TJ Barker, that is now 
amongst your ranks and in medical school. People who do and give, they don't just pop up all of a sudden. You guys have been giving and doing since before you came to Michigan State University. You were chosen by Michigan State University because of what you do. Two years after Mid-Michigan Medical Society was established, they established their scholarship. And that scholarship this year did go to Brittany Lane and to Riza, and I am proud of them. We also give two scholarships to the College of Osteopathic Medicine, and I am proud of that. But I want you guys to understand that it took vision for that. It took Bill, Bill Bryant and all the other African-American physicians in this community throwing huge dinners year after year to raise money. Then in 2008, I went to Marsha Rapley and I went to Aaron Sousa and I asked them for guidance and support in being able to grow our monies because I don't know if you guys remember, it was proposition, ooh, I can't even remember which proposition it was, but it was gonna do away with anything that had to deal with specifics of ethnicity. They helped us to come up with the language that we have today so that we could continue growing that scholarship into what it is now. And so I thank Erin, I thank Marsha Rapley, I thank Wanda Lipscomb, you guys think she's just been there for you guys. Oh my gosh, Wanda, Dr. Lipscomb has been there for all of us. Even when I joined this faculty in 2013, Dr. Lipscomb was there. She had her Center of Excellence grant that has helped me and now others to make sure that we get a good foothold. And that is what you guys are doing. You guys are, are equipped and ready and moving in such a way that you're not only using the tools for you, you guys are using them for your family, you're using them for your community. Don't stop giving back. Keep reaching back to the generations that are coming behind us. Keep reaching out to your colleagues, keep reaching forward to those who have mentored you, those who have gone before you. And we will equip the world with physicians that are compassionate, that are merciful, that are humane. We are such an awesome group. We truly do not let go of one another. MSU is your home. Even as I leave here to go back finally to California after 25 years, you guys, I came here in 1995. It is now 2020, that visionary year, but I'm still there for you. If you guys know of any of your colleagues that need a job or that want to have a desert rural experience, because I will be with Heritage Victorville, you got it. And don't forget that I have established that international global health program that will continue going to the country of Kenya. And you guys eventually I hope to have at least two other African nations that are solidly a part of the CHM Global Health Curriculum. So I commit to you to never stop reaching back, never re stop reaching out, never stop reaching forward. And I pray that for those of you who are still gonna be here, Brittany, and some of you others that are listening, Continue to pull at the chains of the physicians in this community. Dr. Glenda Moore is still here. Saray Eden is still here. Lakia Tucker is still here. Elaine Laws Barker is still here. 
we are that wind beneath your wings. We are the ones who will go and speak up for you at any point in time that you need. Believe you and me, we fear nothing. Thank you, Diane Wagner and all the others who have been there to support us over these years. I love MSU. Go green, go white. <laughs> Bye, you guys. Thank you so much, Dr. Sakomi. As we come to the close of a very, very special evening, I want to underscore a couple of things that I hope that you guys will always take with you. Well, I very much appreciate that you feel I had some investment in what you were able to achieve. Remember, I did not take one exam. I didn't have to take care of any patients. I didn't have to see blood. I didn't have to clean up stuff. I am always just taken aback by um, the comments, the kind comments that come at this towards me at this program. But I want you to understand that your success is because you worked hard. You deserve to be here. You're not here by accident. You could not have applied to medical school with over six or 7,000 applicants and be here by mistake. You're here by intention. All too often, we measure our success by the pathways we had as we move from one place to another. When you're, as a physician, as your patients begin to interact with you, they won't know whether you were Go Humanism Honor Society or you were AOA or it took you a smidgen a few more months to finish all your requirements or if your pathway into the medical school was through ABLE, or if your pathway through the medical school was through multiple applications, what they will respond to is the fact that you finished. Now you're about to begin a new journey. The exciting thing about the profession that you have chosen is you will have many, many journeys over time. And the wind beneath your wings will be your families who love you, the community that has um, belief in you. For many of you, being a part of a faith community is very important. You do not have to separate that from what you do every day as a physician. It will only enrich what you have to share with patients. You have been a phenomenal group of students. And that regional conference that um, was held for SNMA is so good for the current SNMA leaders to hear about this. It was the second regional SNMA conference that we hosted at Michigan State University. The very first regional conference that we hosted was held at the Secchia Center, and it was the first community-based event um, that was organized um, under the leadership of Dr. Marsha Rapley. And we saw the Christian, um, the Secchia Center. I don't think people had seen that many um, people of color in one place in that, in that center at all during that first year. Um, and so the regional conference that your cohort planned, it was the second one. And you all took it to a much higher level. It was much larger. Um, but I want all of you to understand that wherever you are in life, connecting to one another is so important. You can do so much more 
connected in an organization, connected in a group. You know, the strength that you gain from one another always will allow you to get through the trials and tribulations. Never allow people to put a ceiling on top of you. We're delighted with the fields that you're going into. But do not be complacent and do not allow people to typecast you. As Dr. Rapley so wonderfully shared as we began earlier, yes, you care about your community. Yes, we need more physicians of color. But don't let that become an albatross around your neck. Think broadly, set high goals, push yourself. We need excellence from you. That's what we have demanded of you as you were students. We always wanted you to push towards excellence. And your success is here because you did that. So now as you walk into graduate medical education, you have to set your goals high all over again. You will have moments when you will doubt yourself, but now you have this huge Spartan MD family. So stay connected to each other. You're so much better in social media, et cetera, et cetera, than any of us are. And so it is really important that you continue to understand that you can be connected to each other regardless of how many states you're in, regardless of how far away you are. We hope that you'll be motivated because you're standing on the shoulders of kings and queens. And so when Dr. Sacconi shares the fact that Dr. Ralph Watson, who is one of the earliest African-American alumni of the college, that he joined ranks with Dr. Glenda Mora, who is also an alumnus of the College of Human Medicine, and with Dr. Bryant, who was just a giant who came to practice medicine in the greater Lansing area. Continuing to reach out to your colleagues is important. So you may be the stimulus to begin um, a National Medical Association chapter in your, in your city. You may be the impetus of deciding that there's going to be a residency rounds of residents of color. Take with you the fact that if you are united together, you can move mountains. You know, if there was a philosopher who talked about if you had only one pencil, and let's say you have 10 pencils and you could go and you can break all 10 pencils pretty easily when they're alone. But when you put the 10 pencils together in a, in a, in a group, it's much harder for somebody to come and just break the group of 10 pencils. And so that's the value of being connected to one another. The other theme that I heard you talk about that I think is so important. I grew up in um, Richmond, Virginia. And if you ever heard me talk about it, I talk about growing up in the capital of the Confederacy because that's where I grew up. It was a harsh place to grow up but it was also a wonderful place to grow up. And I think, you know, over the years, I have had that experience of being in places where it's just African-Americans and the question is, are you black enough? You know, there's a continuum of blackness, right? There's a continuum of experiences the richness that you each brought to the college was so significant, right? So be your own best person. You don't have to fit into someone else's image. You don't have to um, follow someone else's bidding. 
it's okay to be quiet and reserved and introspective. And it's equally okay to be the person who it becomes more like the spokesperson. The strength of diversity and inclusion has nothing to do with the color of your skin. It has to do with the spirit and the heart in which you bring to something. We're all going to be facing some very difficult times for the um, conceivable future. You can tell that as medical educators and researchers are becoming closer connected to each other, working more in teams, that we're beginning to see new opportunities, new ideas, new technologies. And so each of you, please walk away knowing that you already have that seed of greatness that is a part of you. We didn't anoint you with that while you were at the College of Human Medicine. You already had it when you came in. Don't worry about what your pathway walking in the door was. Be focused on what your future is gonna be. And whatever patient that you serve, every patient will be benefited by your absolute commitment to providing quality care. All of us have biases. None of us are unbiased creatures. Often I've been in places where when we're just a group of, you know, what we call a people of color, we act as if we don't have any biases. And that keeps us from growing, that keeps us from being um, as successful as we can be. So being open to understanding that we each have so much to learn from others, that that learning process will never end. It will be continuous. And I think I can say this for the faculty and the staff at the college, you each have forced us to grow in areas that we never would have grown had you not been there to guide us. So while you think that your educational process has been the learning process, I hope that each of you will walk away understanding how much you helped all of the individuals that you interacted with learn. And not only your classmates, but the faculty and the staff. Not only the, the faculty that you interacted with in the quote unquote classroom part of medical education, but also remember all of those individuals, the residents, the attending, the clerkship directors, the nurses and all the health professionals that you worked with, you have helped us all learn something because you shared something about yourself with us. I'm passionate about the opportunity to open doors for others because as a first generation college kid, lots of people open doors for me. I feel like that's my raison d'etre. Every time I tried to escape the state of Michigan, I didn't. Dr. Ciccone gives me hope that eventually I will be able to return home to my state of Virginia because I've been trying to do this for a really long time and I just haven't gotten there yet. I thought maybe while Dr. Rapley was there, if anybody could have convinced me to go back home and work, it would have been Dr. Rapley. But she was kind enough to know that she would not threaten to take anything away from the College of Human Medicine. So she would only invite me to come and consult and visit on occasion. But each of us have something else to give. Usually at this event, when we're in person, we have an award that's called the Carrie B. Jackson Award. So Dr. Carrie Jackson was my predecessor, who was the Associate Dean for Student Affairs. Um, Dr. Jackson still lives in the Greater Lansing area. She still 
supports lots of activities for the college. Um, and she was a, just a very kind person. I mean, she was a very family-oriented person. She was not the person who was going to walk in the room and bang on the table. Um, she always had this infectious smile. I see her now, and she still has her infectious smile. And the SNMA um, decided that they wanted to always have her recognized as a part of this banquet. And so they established the Carrie B. Jackson Award. So I've been struggling with um, who should be the recipient because the way it's written up is the student affairs dean has to choose someone. So this year, that was like really, really hard because there are so many of you who do so many things for others. So I've sort of decided to do a, a, a sort of a montage of sorts. And I'm going to just call out a few individuals. And I'm going to just say a couple of comments about your spirit that seems obvious to others. So Dr. Clementina Asamoah, fearless can, will take on anything, you know, and I think about Dr. Clem, who started the college um, with just this zeal to excel. Like, I've never seen anybody, Clem, work as hard as you did. And you would work so hard, and then it would, it would seem like you weren't working. Like, it looked effortless. And, um, your leadership was on display not only in the planning of the regional conference for SNMA, but it was also in display in the early planning of the Reach Out to Youth program. And you could walk into a room and calm people's spirits. And so that commitment to family the, to the Spartan family was so important. Dr. Kiona Thompson, who I would say always has on perfect makeup. <laughs> I still remember Dr. Thompson the first day of orientation because she just walked in and everything was in place. And, you know, I'm like, was she a model? Does somebody, you know, how does, how does she just look put together all the time? And so Dr. Thompson was one of the co-presidents of SNMA. And she had this very gentle spirit. And her other co-president was this really firecracker, high energy, sort of march into the room, takeover kind of person. And it was always just wonderful, um, Dr. Thompson, to see you lead with grace and composure and that quiet reserve. Um, Dr. Adriana Jackson was co-treasurer. And so Adriana had to make sure that the money was right. And that meant that Dr. Jackson had to not only interact um, with the SNMA members on both campuses, but she also had to interact with the SNMA regional people. And Adriana can make you laugh in any situation. She was always like fun. And anything that was possible, Adriana would be willing to, to try. And then there's Dr. Will McClure, who like he said, he was the man in the group. Um, so Dr. McClure, your spirit, your faith-filled spirit you just brought us calm. And Dr. Um, McClure was also a regional officer. And so he was like the, the person who was kind of trying to make sure that all the planning was done in accordance to regional guidelines. Um, so Dr. McClure, I want to thank you. 
And I want to thank Dr. Amina Ramadan, who Amina, her force that we saw was for four years, she served on the Dean's Student Advisory Committee. And Amina was never fearful of challenging us. Dr. Ramadan would bring issues. She would know how to challenge us with issues in a way that was so, um, it didn't feel like you were being yelled at, but she was very persistent. So she would bring those issues over and over until there was some response. So, you know, I, I saw that have come up with this, this group of five um, because I think collectively glued all together like those pencils, nobody could break you. I still remember when Dr. Asamoah suggested that we do all of the planning meetings by video conference because she felt like if we could see each other's behaviors, we would act better. And Dr. Clem, that is exactly what happened. So when SNMA established the Carrie B. Jackson Award, it was, you know, the sense of identifying a senior who embodied all of these um, characteristics. And I think it is the group of seniors that I just mentioned who have embodied what was so special to Dr. Jackson. Now, that does not to mean that the contributions of everyone else was not excellent. And I think when I look across the group that is with us tonight, you all were very strong SNMA folks. You went to meetings, you worked with MAPS, you worked with um, putting in place an undergraduate mentoring program. You had a great linkage to the Mid-Michigan Medical Society in East Lansing, but you also had a great linkage to the um, Grand Rapids West Michigan Medical Society. Because of your vision as a class and your help, we were able to um, create a new position, Assistant Dean for Diversity and Cultural Initiatives. And we have a phenomenal mentor, Dr. Lisa Lowry, who many of you knew if you were a student in Grand Rapids. So we were privileged to be able to move Dr. Lowry from a volunteer mentorship to a full, fully embodied assistant dean of, here at the College of Human Medicine. That would not have happened without SNMA ruffling the feathers a little and saying we need more visible role models in West Michigan. And so I just wanted to call her out. She chose not to speak tonight, but it just seemed very important that you know how the work that you guys did collectively as a class have helped us move our diversity and inclusion agenda along. I hope that you guys have really enjoyed tonight. It was all about being with family. I would be remiss if I did not take the time to thank so many people who made tonight possible. In order for us to do any of this work, there's always a cast um, of thousands, in a way it always feels like to me, who are behind the scenes, doing the hard work, making it work. Um, I think we have a phenomenal team that is totally committed to student success. I'd like to thank um, Dr. Judy Brady, Dr. Dina Wilbanks, Dr. Julie Phillips, Mrs. Amy Fowler, Mrs. Tamara Dillingham, Ms. Ruth Patino, Ms. Deborah Sadoff, Ms. Teresa Blanks, Ms. Joy Scott, Mr. Jordan Stein. I hope I haven't left anyone out. Ms. Mel Melissa Kakos, who's not actually working with us tonight, but was so key and Mrs. Sherry Linneman.
I mean, it takes all of these people working together to make us look good. And I just want to publicly thank them. And I also want to thank Dr. Rapley, because Dr. Rapley, in her time with us as dean, she ensured that the ABLE program would be totally stable with funding. That was a major move on her part. I'd like to thank Dr. Norm Beauchamp, who is not with us, because Dr. Beauchamp, during his time as, as dean, and many of you interacted with him, he listened to what you brought to him individually, and that has shaped um, an intentionality of support for diversity that is still present and, and being grown, even with him moving to the level of executive um, vice president. And the person who has been here through all of this, all along, continuous, never wavering, um, has been Dr. Aaron Sousa. When Dr. Sousa joined us as um, Senior Associate Dean for Academic Affairs, none of us really knew him very well. And um, I feel as if we'd just been in a waltz ever since he walked in the door because his commitment to social justice is totally unwaving. He um, is honest, he has integrity, he speaks his mind, and he gives us the opportunity to do programming and activity with very little sort of interference at all. And he is continuing the work of Dr. Rapley and Dr. Beauchamp and doing everything he can to ensure that the diversity and inclusion agenda at the college never gets washed away. Um, finally, I would like to thank the community assistant deans, the directors of student programs, um, our wonderful new senior associate dean for academic affairs, Dr. Wagner, you know, everyone has to be a part of the solution here. And I know often when you were students, you didn't necessarily understand how much went on in the background. I was so delighted to hear um, someone mention Dr. Janet Osuch, who was our previous assistant dean uh, for preclinical curriculum. The college attracts people who care about the mission of education for our students. And I think it's been very, very special to work with a team of individuals who are all willing to learn. You have pushed us, graduates of 2020, to be a better institution. We have a long way to go. We're not at all where we should be. But we are so excited to call you Spartan MDs. And so we will close tonight with a tribute to you. I will turn the screen over to Joy. <laughs>